Yes, yes, sounds good. I can hear my ad book, perfect. Thank you for the introduction. My name is Saul Flores. Um, I'm 20 years old. I'm a graphic design and business marketing student here at NC State University. And this past summer, I made a journey called the Walk of the Immigrants. And the Immigrants was a walk from Quito, Ecuador, to Charlotte, North Carolina, as an imitation of the struggles that migrants make to get to this country. And it was my hope. I had four major reasons to get to, the, to, to begin this walk. My first reason was to enlighten the American audience that immigration is such a prominent issue in our communities. Migrants are coming from every corner of every corner of the world, whether we like it or not. And they're going through hell to come to this country. Um, so many of these communities, so many of these migrants that are leaving their, their families, their homes, they're leaving because they don't have an option. They, you know, it's, they're leaving because they were placed on this planet to survive and to be able to take care of their family and to nurture their communities. So it was my hope to enlighten the, the American audience about the struggles that these migrants make to get to this, to this country. Two was to create a photo journal. It was my hope to document the journey of the undocumented, to photograph the entire way, 10 countries, to capture the beautiful landscapes, the natural wonders of these communities, but also to be able to communicate the adversity and the situations of these communities to, to help people understand why these migrants are leaving these communities. Three, my goal was to, once having photographed all these countries, to, to sell these photographs and be able to direct funds towards an impoverished school in Atencingo, Mexico. And Atencingo, Mexico is a very special place to me because it's where my mother immigrated from. She herself made the walk of the immigrants and left this community. And during this past spring break, myself and a couple of Caldwell fellows were able to do some service work. And the school captured my attention. And fourth was to bring awareness. I'm a Mexican-American student with a descent in Mexico and El Salvador. And I can say from first-hand first -hand experience that living in this country is extremely difficult for Latin American communities right now. It's, it's a very difficult time for, for families. Individuals are being deported. Families are being separated. Communities are being destroyed. And it was my hope to, to be able to enlighten people about this journey that migrants are making to get into this country. And this journey took me a lot longer than what I thought it was going to take me. I was, I was under this impression that I was going to travel for a summer and to, to make it back in, in school. But it took me three months to get to this country. And it was my hope to be able to understand the difficulties and, and the struggles of migrants coming into this country. And I hitchhiked the entire way from Quito, Ecuador to Charlotte, Carolina. I used every form of transportation that, that you could imagine, everything from hitchhiking along the archipelago de San Blas on a canoe to hopping on the backs of buses. I, I tried to maintain consistent with the journey of a migrant coming into this country. And I did it for these little kids. These are the little kids from Atencingo. They come from an amazing community and an amazing place from in, in Mexico. What's so special about these kids is that these kids lack the educational resources that they need to, to continue an education to pursue their dreams to, 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 to amount to anything in life. And it was my hope to be able to provide them with the, with the financial backing and the economical resources that my family, that my mother and my father have provided for me throughout my entire life. But what's so amazing is that these kids are abundant with hope since they have such a strong community. They have the support of their peers and their educators. And it, and it was hopeful for me. It was inspiring to be able to see these kids. And Another reason is because these kids are a direct result of the walk of the immigrants. Many of these students are left behind. Um, a lot of their, their mothers and their fathers are coming into this country, are, are, are making the journey north, and they're dying along the borders. And a lot of these kids are living by themselves, or living with their godmothers, with their fathers. And it was just, to me, unfair to be able to come in and visit, do service work, and then have to leave again. So it was my goal to be able to, to help them, to be, to be able to provide them with the resources that my mother and my father, who immigrated as well, gave me, and the decisions that they made to come into this country for hope and opportunity. So it was my hope to be able to translate those very ethics that my parents communicated to me to these little kids. And just to, just to see the innocence in their eyes was, was inspiring self and for the entire Caldwell Fellows Program, which is the scholarship program that allowed me to make this journey. And I was set, 
you know, I decided to that I decided that I wanted to make this journey. And now I had to tell my parents. And when I told my parents that I was going to make this journey, this very journey that they themselves had made, the silence in their response was enough. You know, they didn't say anything, but and it was heartbreaking for me to hear this response. But I was determined, and I was I was excited that I would hopefully be able to help these kids have this journey. And this journey took me through a lot of emotional roller coasters. I was I saw things that that individuals should not be exposed to. I saw the natural wonders of all these communities. I saw the families, how they live, where they live. I saw the natural wonders, the beauties, but I also saw the adversity of these communities. And I saw the reasons why migrants are coming into these countries. I saw poverty. I saw death. I saw destruction. And, and it was heartbreaking to see. And, and I, I traveled under the most extreme conditions that you could imagine. You know, I, I was under this impression when I first began this journey that I was going to be traveling for three months and it would be fine, that I would be able to capture the, the cultural realities of all these communities. But I was wrong because this imitation of this, of this walk took me to a reality that I don't even know if I should have been exposed to. You know, I was eating once a day. I was walking 10, 12 hours a day. I was riding on the backs of buses. It was extreme. And I was sleeping outside. I was homeless for three months. And, and this journey opened to, to a world that's so prominent in this, in this country, in this, in this nation, in this globe, that's invisible. All these communities that are, all these migrants that are making this journey to come into the United States are living such a difficult life in this country. They're living through adversity, through, through poverty, as a result of the decisions that are being made in the government. And, and it's important to see and to understand how difficult of a journey it is to come into the United States, how hard, how much one must pray and hope for the best making this journey. And I, and I photographed the entire way from Ecuador, Colombia, Panama, I photographed everything you could imagine, everything that moved, everything that spoke to me, everything that was culturally distinct and everything that was culturally similar. And I kept photographing and I was excited and, and, I, and I learned a lot and I was able to, thank God, capture these moments, capture the, the cultural distinction, the fabrics of these cultural communities, but I also saw what I didn't want to see. And, and, I, want to, and I want to tell you something that, that happened to me along this way. This is my little brother, Sergio. 18 years old, and it was the first time that I was able to meet him this past summer. And we've been trying to get Sergio into this country for the past 18 years, legally and illegally. And he's been caught five times. And right now, he's living in, a, in an extremely difficult situation in El Salvador. And, and it breaks my heart to say this because I'm El Salvadorian, but El Salvador is going through some of the, the worst conflicts that you could imagine, through a civil war that, that can't be described through words. I was there for a couple of days, and the fear that I experienced throughout those days was unimaginable. That you know, it's something that, that a photograph can't capture, that my words can't capture. And and it was amazing to, to say hello to my little brother for the first time, but it was heartbreaking to have to say goodbye to him, to have to leave somebody that you love so much that you've been in communication for your entire life. You know, I've been speaking to my little brother since he was born, since you know, since. We were, since we were children, and we've always had this, this relationship by the phone. We've always had this source of communication, and it was the first time that I was able to actually meet him, and I, and I was extremely grateful for that. And then I had to leave him behind, and I had to pray. You know, I pray every morning that he's okay. I pray every night that, that he's okay, that nothing bad's happening to him. And there's absolutely nothing that I can do to bring my little brother to come live with his family. And I said goodbye to him. And, and I kept going. I kept photographing and I kept trying to capture all these cultural distinctions of all these countries, of all these communities. I lived with an indigenous group in Panama. So I experienced every emotion that you could imagine. I experienced every pain mental, mentally, physically, and emotionally. I went through experience that a human being can, can go through in their lives. And I learned a lot along the way. 
And this is the Mexican-American border. And when I reached the Mexican-American border, words cannot describe how difficult this community was. You know, I could smell death. I was there for two days, and 52 people were killed during my time there. And, and I could see thousands of immigrants getting ready for the final step of their journey. And I prayed for them, like I prayed for myself during those, those initial hours when I was about to make that final jump. And then I finally realized what's important in life. I realized that those little kids in Atencingo, they don't really matter. I realized that my little brother in El Salvador doesn't really matter. My family, the well-being of my family in this country does not matter. What really matters are the decisions we make today to help maintain the integrity of the human race. Thank you.